Strain caused by thermal condition is called thermal strain. But how about stress? Is there a term for thermal stress? Does temperature change directly lead to stress? The answer is no here. Thermal condition causes strain in materials, but not stress. So there is no so-called thermal stress. However, it's common that you see stress developing in the material when the body is under thermal condition. Such stress appears with elastic strain. Stress and elastic strain is generated when the structure is under constraint with thermal condition, or there are different expand rates between different parts of the body. Bottom of the line, temperature itself does not generate stress, and we cannot and shouldn't quantify the contribution of stress due to temperature. With this point clarified, let's focus on how thermal strain is defined and calculated in solid mechanics. Thermal strain is purely determined by the material's property. Different materials respond to thermal condition differently. We use a simple coefficient to characterize it, which is called coefficient of thermal expansion and is denoted by alpha here. People call it CTE for most of the time. Thermal strain is linear proportional to the temperature change and it is scaled by the coefficient of thermal expansion. Here, T minus T reference reports the temperature difference between the current temperature and reference temperature. The reference temperature is basically the initial temperature of the body when there is no thermal strain. It could be the environment temperature or it is a given condition for the body. Because strain is a unitless quantity and temperature has unit in degree, so for the coefficient of thermal expansion alpha, the unit is inverse temperature degree. The coefficient of thermal expansion CTE describes how the size of an object changes with temperature change. As a material's property, CTE is measured in testing labs, just like Young's modulus, Poisson's ratio, etc. There are several types of coefficient of thermal expansion, volumetric CTE, area CTE, and linear CTE. For example, for finding linear CTE, we can measure the change of length delta L for a specimen under a certain of temperature change delta T and calculate the ratio of delta L and delta T. Then divide the ratio by the original length of the specimen. Same thing for area and volumetric CTE. Let's have a look of coefficient of thermal expansion for common materials. You can see that in general, aluminum expands more than steel with same temperature increase. Note that the CTE of these materials here are measured at reference temperature 20 Celsius degree. In fact, at different reference temperature, one material might have different thermal expansion ratios. So special attention need to be paid to the reference temperature of the problem you're solving so that you choose the right CTE for the material. A little bit more discuss of the reference temperature. It is the temperature at which zero thermal strengths exist for the analysis. It is not always the room temperature or environment temperature. If the body is initially at rest at 40 Celsius degree and the CTE is measured from this temperature, then 40 degree could be the reference temperature for it. You might remind that, in general, strain is a 3 by 3 tensor with 9 components. For thermal strain, in tensor form, there are only 3 diagonal terms because it's a volumetric quantity in 3D space. The 3 diagonal terms correspond to 3 normal directions in x, y, and z axis. And generally speaking, Thermal deformation for most of the materials is an isotropic behavior, which means it behaves the same in different directions. It is quite rare to have different CTE in different directions. Therefore, the three diagonal terms are the same for most of the case. And that is why thermal strain usually appears to be a scalar. 